Working with a book editor can help you take your story to the next level and realize your vision for it, but there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what a book editor does and how the book editing process works. To be honest, before I worked in the industry, I had some of these same misconceptions as well. So today I want to debunk some of the common myths about book editing that emerging authors might have and give you more insight into the process and reality of book editing as part of your publishing journey. Now this is especially important if you are considering working with a book editor on your current work in progress. If you are anywhere along the writing or publishing journey, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week I post a video either with publishing industry advice like this one or tips on how to strengthen your manuscript and I'd love to have you around. Also make sure to go into my description and grab my free story self-assessment. It's going to help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your current work in progress, which I know is something that can be very challenging to do on your own. So I created that resource to help guide you on how you might revise your story. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter with exclusive tips and resources. So let's dive into the first misconception about book editing, which is that editing is primarily about fixing typos and grammatical errors. Well, it is true that the function of editing is to make your story more polished. There are actually many different levels of book editing and catching typos and fixing grammatical mistakes is only one level in the entire book editing ecosphere. It would actually be considered the most granular and detail-focused portion of the editing process. But there's a whole lot more that gets done in book editing before you really worry about typos and all of the grammatical mistakes. What I like to envision when I am walking through the different types of editing is a funnel where you are going to start from the highest level, most overarching form of editing, which is what we call developmental editing. This is the type of editing that is talking about your overarching story structure, your approach to plot and character development, your pacing, all of those big picture elements that make your story what it is. This is the type of editing that I specialize in. From developmental editing, the next level down the funnel would be line editing and copy editing. In this form of editing, you are working with someone on more of a sentence by sentence level so that you are making sure that everything is flowing smoothly, that your prose has a nice rhythm, and that the sentences sound good. Then the final stage of editing is proofreading, and that's what I call the nitty gritty editing. That's when we are just doing a final pass, making sure there are no typos or grammatical mistakes so that the book is as polished as possible before it goes out into the world. So in summary, you go from working with a book editor on the entire story to working sentence by sentence, then finally working word by word, so to speak. To encompass all of these different levels of editing, I typically recommend that an author works with two to three different editors. That would be one developmental editor and one copy or line editor, and then one proofreader. Sometimes you might have the same copy or line editor and proofreader, but I find that it is really, really helpful to have a separate proofreader to just get completely fresh eyes on the book, someone who has never read it, because their eye is just naturally going to catch things that someone who has already read it might not. The reason why you have different editors for different stages of editing is because different editors have different skill sets, and all of those different levels of editing are quite different in function and in their purpose. Each one of those editors is going to provide you a different level and style of feedback. Now, if you are pursuing traditional publishing and you are interested in working with a book editor, personally, I feel it is most important to work with a developmental editor on that big picture story versus investing necessarily in a copy edit or a proofread because literary agents and editors at publishing houses don't necessarily expect that the manuscript is going to have no mistakes in it grammatically or spelling wise. So I feel it is typically better to invest your money in really transforming your story and making sure it is the most effective from a structure perspective. That said, if you are concerned about your prose on a line by line or sentence by sentence level, then it might make sense to work with a line or copy editor on that. The second misconception about book editing is that authors should accept every suggestion from their editor. I truly ascribe to the philosophy that editing is at the end of the day, a collaboration between the author and the editor, which means that having back and forth dialogue about the book is 
extremely productive and important to the creative process. It actually results in a stronger story. This collaborative element is especially important when we're talking about that big picture developmental editing because you're talking through ideas on things like plot development, maybe a character backstory, maybe point of view, all of which can be handled in dozens of different ways and there's not necessarily just one right or wrong answer in the way that there is when it comes to grammar mistakes. Both writing and editing are ultimately creative pursuits, which means that both the author and the editor are going to bring their own creative ideas to the table. And the magic happens when those creative minds meld and you're able to create something really special and unique. All of this is to say that at the end of the day, as the author, you are the visionary for your story. No one can take that away from you. And it is completely okay to say no to some suggestions from your editor if they don't resonate with you. In some cases, you might actually think up a creative solution to a problem that your editor points out that the editor didn't even consider, which is the beauty of you being true and equal partners on your project. For instance, your editor might say, this plot twist doesn't work. How about you do this instead? And if their suggestion doesn't make sense to you or you just don't like it, it is completely your right to come back and say something like, I see why that original plot twist doesn't work, but how about we do this? And it's a completely different idea. You are able to handle the edits however you see fit. Your editor is there to help you and try to guide you and steer you in the right direction, but every decision with your story is your decision at the end of the day. The third misconception about book editing is that editors often change an author's voice or their vision for their story. Now I have to say, this misconception really upsets me anytime I hear an author saying it, because in my view, this is actually the complete opposite of what an editor's purpose is. A book editor's job is to help you realize your creativity and manifest your vision for your story, not diminish it or disregard it or deplete it. If you feel that an editor is changing your voice in a way that doesn't feel authentic or right, or they're not understanding your vision for the project, then it is possible that maybe you aren't the right editorial match. And this applies especially to working with a developmental editor when it comes to the vision for your story, or if you're working on voice, a line or a copy editor, because they will be in there looking at how the sentences are actually structured. This is why I strongly recommend vetting any potential editor before you agree to work with them. You want to make sure you check their genre specialties and understand that they work on books that are similar to yours so they have an understanding of what you are trying to do. And ideally, you would get a sample edit from them before you make that investment so that you can ensure their style of feedback resonates with you. Again, any book editor's goal is ultimately to help you reach your creative potential and see your story soar. So if you ever feel like they are stifling you or misunderstanding you, then it is time to end that collaboration and potentially work with someone else. The next misconception is that editors are supposed to rewrite the story themselves. This is a misconception related to the revising and rewriting process. And this is especially pertinent to the developmental editing process. In the developmental editing process, the editor is going to give you suggestions for how to change a scene or change maybe the structure of the plot and give you suggestions on how that might look but they're not necessarily going to go into the manuscript and move around all the paragraphs or rewrite sections that they suggest you rewrite. For instance, an editor could suggest something like, revise this scene to include a conversation between X and Y character about this. But they're not gonna actually go into that scene and write out that conversation themselves for two reasons. The first is that, as I mentioned earlier, editing is a collaboration. So first, the editor wants to make sure you agree with that feedback. They're not gonna go in and change something without your explicit approval. And two, at the end of the day, you are the author and the editor is the editor, not a co-writer or a ghostwriter. So the writing portion is on you, the editing portion is on them. Have you ever heard the saying, writing is rewriting? I know some of you probably cringe at that because I understand the revising process is probably the hardest part of the entire book writing journey, but it is some of the most important work that you will do to make your story stronger. That's why I encourage all of the writers I work with to embrace the revision process as much as you can and as hard as it may be. Think of your story like wet clay. 
you can continue to mold and reshape it. And it can become something beautiful that you maybe even didn't anticipate it becoming. Try to allow this process to be energizing and exciting and know that you can and should lean on your editor for support. The final misconception about book editing is that all book editors work the same way. You might have a vision of a book editor printing out a manuscript on paper and then marking it up in red pen. And in fact, that's exactly what my former boss at Penguin Random House did, even when we were long into Word documents on the computer. The truth is that every editor has their own style and their own process because as I said, editing is also a creative act just as writing is. How this might manifest in your collaboration is that some editors might be more verbal oriented in their feedback and they might schedule a series of phone conversations to give you the feedback they have on your manuscript. Other editors might stay quiet for a bit while they're working on your manuscript, reading it, digesting it, taking notes, and then they will write up a detailed report in a document for you to review. There's no right or wrong way to edit a book, just as there is no right or wrong way to write a book. The bottom line is that no two editors are going to edit your book in the exact same way. For instance, two developmental editors might have similar overarching feedback or they might point to similar problems in the manuscript, but they might have completely different suggestions for how to revise it. It is also possible that something that one editor thought was an issue, another editor doesn't find an issue at all. Ultimately, editing is a subjective pursuit. That's why I speak so much about finding that right editorial match to ensure you are working with someone who does share your vision. I hope these tips help you better understand the book editing process and how book editors work. Let me know in the comments if you've ever worked with a book editor or if you're planning to on your current work in progress. And I have another video with tips on how to choose a book editor and vet them if you are nearing that part of the book writing process. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you go into the description and grab that free story self-assessment. It's actually going to help you do a little bit of self-editing, which can be a very helpful skill to know. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.